Getting married is a big decision. Picking your wedding party is an even bigger decision. Because let's be honest, if you pick the wrong spouse, everybody gets divorced, a couple hundred bucks, some lawyer fees, and a little bit of paperwork will make it seem like that never even happened. But the relationships you make or break with who you choose for your wedding party will haunt you for the rest of your life. The most important step in selecting your wedding party is adhering to the cap. It's a lot like the NFL salary cap and there's two main stipulations. The general premise of the cap is this, you are allowed five people. If you need more than five people to have your back, you've picked the wrong bride or groom. Also, when your family walks to the altar, it shouldn't look like a Wu-Tang Clan winning a Grammy. It should be five of your best friends, everybody else is in the pews. The first stipulation on the cap is the groom is allowed five men, the bride is allowed five females. That's it. That cannot be worked around. If the bride has a brother, too bad. If the groom has a cousin he's real tight with, or an aunt that raised him like a mother or some other you know, foolishness, they're out. You pick five guys, the girl picks five girls, that's your wedding party. That's stipulation one. Stipulation two is this, and this works like the luxury tax in baseball. If you have to go over for some reason, like you're on one of those stupid reality TV families where they got like 18 kids and you got to get them all in your wedding party, you can do it, but you have to pay a penalty. And the penalty can you can work it out with your spouse. If some of the ones that I like to see use is this. Everybody in the offending party is not allowed to speak to anyone on the wedding day. Everyone in the offending party can't drink at all at the reception. Or they have to ride a bike from the church to the reception. They're not allowed to use any kind of motorized vehicle. Your first pick is going to be your family pick. You're going to look for somebody with your same last name, but if that doesn't work out, feel free to go over to your mother's side of the family if you absolutely have to. The beauty of this pick is it shuts everybody else up because you're only picking one family member, so you got to draw the line somewhere. And number two, it ensures a great gift from them and their entire immediate family. A couple picks you want to look at on this. You want to pick siblings, obviously a good choice. Uh, cousins that are close to your age, another good choice. And my personal favorite, younger nieces and nephews that aren't cool yet, but you think will be soon. This way, when you're a little older and you're married and you're lame, they're still cool and they kind of link you back into being cool by association. Your next selection is going to be your high school representative. And this is a person that you've been riding out with since you're 14 or 15 years old. You got a bunch of you know, stories you love to tell about almost getting in trouble and drinking in the woods and stuff like that. And uh, you're going to pick this person whether or not you still have anything else in common or not. So if you're an orthodontist and you live in a mansion and this person is still living at home with their parents and working in a dollar store and you barely speak you have nothing left to talk about, you still pick a high school representative. Our next pick is going to be from either college, graduate school, or trade school, whichever one you went to. And the point of this pick is not to pick somebody you were necessarily very good friends with, it's to impress your family and your home friends about how cool you were when you were away at school. So if you don't have any friends from college, just hire somebody. Hire the best looking, coolest person you can find, and that's your college representative. Our fourth pick is going to be either a work or neighborhood friend where you plan to live. Now this is a little bit of a political pick, but if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. When you're in somebody's wedding party, it's like being blood brothers. you got to live and die for that person. So if you pick somebody you work with, or potentially your boss, that person will ride it out with you forever. They're never going to turn you in for having low sales figures. They're never going to tell your superior to spend all day looking for sneakers online and watching rap battles on YouTube. That's your man. Secondly, if you pick somebody in your neighborhood where you plan to live, that person is never going to call the cops if your bushes grow over on their side of the lawn. And 20 years from now, when you're taking your wife to the Poconos, they're not going to call the cops on your kid who's having a rager in your house while you're gone. Our fifth and final selection is our minority representative. And this pick is crucial for two reasons. Number one, it allows us to show our friends and family how open-minded and progressive thinking we are, while at the same time sets us up for a lifetime of telling off-color jokes with zero repercussions. The reason for that is easy. As you go through life after this, you can say anything you want. The most ignorant joke you can think of, follow it up with, I'm not really racist because some of my best friends are black, Hispanic, Asian. Just look at my wedding picture and you're good. 
That's going to wrap it up on FearFroundMovement.com's advice on how to select a wedding party. These rules are all set in stone and completely irrefutable. If you don't like them or you want to deviate from them at all, I suggest you don't get married because you are headed for disaster.